program. The decision has been made for me. I am coming back to OTR. It's a no-brainer to do this lease. It's a no-brainer. So, so far, I'm kind of a little upset about the fact that they're not offering that aerodynamic package. It's called, I believe it's, I believe it's called the Epic package. If, I can, if my memory serves me right. And it's speaking with Lyle from OAP Trucking and Transport. He said his fuel miles out of the box was in the double digits. My fuel miles out of the box was mid sixes. Until I hit about 50, 60,000. And it progressively got better and better and better. So I don't know why they're not offering that. Unless it comes standard with it. I don't know. But if they don't, if they don't, it is what it is. I will certainly try to do something in the aftermarket to enhance my fuel economy. So that's one. Ooh, 41 degrees over the sun. Blue mountains. Um, number two is I just am coming off my worst week ever. Ever in OTR. I grossed a whole $960 this week. One of the reason is um, I had to go to Salt Lake City to fix my APU, which turned out I needed a new alternator. And the ground wire was off, so that's why it was wasn't running. It shut off after five minutes. So that's been taken care of. Yeah, I mean, hey, listen, it is my worst week ever. But one bad week is not a is not a representation of my entire body of work. My entire body of work is excellent. Trip, the, the, the load I'm picking up now is going from Oregon to Allentown, PA. I've got five days to bring it there, six days to include today as a, as a drive, which I will. There's six days to go, 2,400 miles. And I'm not going to even talk about what that, what I'm getting for this, because it's, it's beyond phenomenal. I'll just let you know that it's just shy of $6,000. I'm going to go home on Friday, but being that slow is so great. I may extend, instead of going on Friday, to go on Wednesday, get another load or two to pad and have a phenomenal, excellent week. Which will make up, more than make up for the crap week I'm having this week. So, you got to expect somewhere along the line in your career, in OTR, there's going to be a horrible week. And that's why you save for rainy days. It's just the way shit falls. I'm blaming nobody is. You know, it's not prime. Everybody, you know, not everybody, but majority of the folks, oh well, prime is prime that one. Or swift this, swift that, swift this. Or night this, night that. It's easy to point fingers. But if you understand the business, it's the way it is. It's the way life is, folks. I mean, you have good days and you have bad days, right? You, you, do you always have a good day? Are you always happy and peppy and crushing it? Very few do. So having one bad week is not a representation of my body of work, as I say. It has nothing to do with the company I work for. It's circumstances. It's just the way it is. Back to the Peterbilt. Getting the disc brake package, the air ride suspension, 
refrigerator. I'll discuss the refrigerator in a second. Refrigerator, disc brakes, LED lights, keyless remote entry, and the covers and windows. Now I just spent why are we doing 50 miles an hour on a Sunday morning? I just spent the uh, my break at Arrowhead Travel Stop. If you guys know about it, where it is in Oregon. It's exit 216 on the I-84. Just after Cabbage or just before Cabbage. And they've been selling these refrigerators that you plug into your that plugs into your cigarette lighter. The small one was $799. And the biggest one, which held a lot of the stuff, was over a thousand. Peter built one $799 for the refrigerator. I have it in my truck now. Came with the truck. Never once did I have an issue with that refrigerator. Knock on wood. So some people are like, well, that's ridiculous. It's too expensive. I'll go, yeah, go price one of these portable refrigerators. And if you want to, you know, you, can you get one for $300? I'm sure, you can, I'm sure you can, but I'm sure it ain't going to last time. Listen, wise money spent well is not a waste of money. Stupid money spent is stupid money. Not, every, not everything that's, you know, that's $200 that you can get a lot of stuff for is really worth it at the end. They break, they fall apart, they're garbage. You end, up, you end up in the long run having to spend more money. Spend the money once, spend it right on quality, and it'll last you. And I ain't carrying no cooler. I can be one of those guys who carries ice, ice bags of ice to a star, styrofoam cooler. Yeah, that's hideous. That's ridiculous. So, again, my options are going to include disc brakes, LED lights, keyless remote entry, refrigerator, and the air ride suspension and the window covers for the back. I'm kind of shocked that they don't have the aero package that they offered just before they uh, pulled the program. Lyle's got it. Lyle from No Hippie Trucking and Transportation's got it. And uh, he loves it. So he's getting double digits right out of the box. Again, I was getting 6'5, six, 6'9 six, for the first 50, 60,000 miles, even if I was in Nebraska, just for sucking fuel until it broke in. Now I'm getting in the 8s and 9s. I'm quite happy with where my fuel economy is. But the aero package that Peter Bill said this on the website, it saves between 5 and 7% more fuel. Than without it. So why are they not offering it? It's a question I'm going to ask successfully soon. But again, if not, then I'm sure I can get some stuff in the aftermarket to improve my fuel economy because ultimately our biggest expense in trucking is fuel. 
not going to do black. I'm not positive on that. I like black. Black is beautiful when it's clean. It gets dirty instantaneously. I like to get a big black mamba snake on my hood. Big H trucking on the doors. But summertime, it's 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 almost like unlivable. The APU just doesn't keep up. That sun just gets absorbed. I don't know if there's insulation. I don't know if Peterbilt insulates their trucks. So that's that. I've always had a. I always like yellow in, in cars. Yellow in trucks. I saw yellow yesterday. You get it all blacked out. Look really good. Or the gunmetal. Gunmetal gray, I think it's what. Gunmetal silver. One of those two. That hides the dirt well. And black on that gray, that, that color, would definitely go. I'm not a grown guy. I like black. I like the black accents. So we'll see. But I am definitely ordering a truck now. It's just a matter of when can I order it? Because I've got 10 months as of Tuesday. i got 10 months left on my lease. I still need to order a truck tomorrow and have it come in and sit there for weeks, if not months. That wouldn't serve any, wouldn't do, wouldn't be right. And I'm certainly not going to put a driver in there for two months and then kick him out or her out or whatever. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to try to time it where, and again, I'll pick success leasing's brain to see how far out it's going to be before the truck comes in. If it's like eight, nine months, then let's do it. But if it's like five, six months for the truck to come in, I've got to hold off. But again, I'll cross that path when I get to it. So with that being said, if you have an opportunity, and it's, you know, it's going to cost you about 21 grand or so between the extras and, you know, the money that you need to put down, try to do the base lease program. It's an asset. Instead of getting a check for 19, 18, 17,000 after you surrender your truck at the end of the term, that asset becomes yours. Not only do you get a thousand dollar plus a week raise, but if you want to, you can turn around and sell the truck for I, knew, I know the market was just hot. But let's just say, conservatively, you can sell that truck for 300,000 miles for seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. That's way better than a $15,000 lease payout check. Or, you can stay pulling free for pride and get that $1,000 plus week raise. So now when you have great weeks, if you have an $8,000 week, instead of putting four grand in, you're putting six grand in your account makes business sense to, to do this, but you've got to have upfront money. So, anybody's new coming into lease, I would encourage you to so, so set up an e-fund, minimum 15 cents a mile, save every dime you can, and after a while you'll have enough money to go ahead and Lease a truck. Again, it's it's a smart, smart business decision to ace lease a truck. Same responsibilities. I've got the same responsibilities on this truck as if I own this truck. I have to pay for my towing. I have to pay for oil changes. <laughs> I have to pay for tires. I don't think there's a tire front on the ace lease program though. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I think that's one thing that you don't have. So anyway, that's what e-funds are about. So anything that breaks on this truck, I'm responsible for, unless it's covered by warranty. Same thing with the Ace lease. I believe it's a three-year, three hundred thousand mile warranty on the drivetrain engine and certain components. A radiator hose is not covered under warranty. Brakes are not covered under warranty. Um, things like that, that's all wear items. Tires are not covered under warranty. But well, again, ultimately, what brakes on this truck that I'm driving now comes out of my pocket. 
regardless, warranty or not. If I'm lucky, I can get it to Peterbilt. It's still running, then great, I save the money on top. But you still got downtime, you're still missing loads, so nothing changes. My buddy Scott, who's got a freight liner, he's had absolutely a smooth ride, except for the other day, he had a little problem with his transmission going into drive with the freight liner. Spent the night, the next morning, they fixed it. He's in and out of that place for less than 24 hours. He's, uh, he's driven continuously. I've had some glitches, all sense related, but I've had some glitches. So, you know, remember, mechanical is mechanical. No one truck is better than the other truck. I like Peterbilt because I grew up in a Peterbilt. The ride, the comfortability, I don't have an air ride suspension. It's absolutely off the charts. But my buddy tells me that his air ride suspension, at the end of the day, his back is beaten up. His freight liners are not an easy ride. They're a difficult ride. But they both offer air ride suspensions, which makes the drivability of both trucks different. I'm a Peterbilt guy. I always will be a Peterbilt guy. You can be a freight liner. That's fine. That's fine. But the smart business decision is to, absolutely is to, own a truck. Because you're not going anywhere in this world today to buy a truck for as little as 20000 down, <coughs> no credit check, no nothing. You're not. You're not going to a dealership. Unless you want a 389 or another truck, that's a different story, but 579 Ultra Loft, a Piedmont Prime Office. It's no brainer. Look, my colleague Lyle, no hippie trucking transportation, check it out his channel. He's slowly building a fleet. He just wanted his third truck. business guy. I was there. I could have got a truck. I backed out not once, but I backed out twice. The second time was just a reasoning because my truck was coming in December and I didn't want to ride a brand new truck through winter. I wanted to wait till spring. Well, that's when success leads and said, <coughs> submit the application in February, March. This way you get your truck will come in or December, January, excuse me, December, January. This way your truck will be in in March, April. No, I didn't do that. When I went to go do it, they had pulled the program. They pulled that program on me so fast. And my regret is because I didn't want to get sold on my truck brand new truck, I lost months and months and months and months. Now, it's no point at this time to shoot my lease and getting a new truck because I have a, I have a check coming to me at the end of my term. My term is done in 10 months. So that would be stupid to leave all this money on the table and jump into another truck <coughs> a couple months before this expires. I'm not doing that. Right out this lease till the end. And it's in September of 20, 20 uh, in 10 months from now, 23. We're in 22 now. So September 2023, in 10 months, <coughs> is when my lease is up. I get a lease payout bonus of how much I don't know. I don't know where it starts, how much it starts, when it's how it is even figured out. All I do know is that any nick, ding, dent, anything, cleaning, that needs to be done to the truck when you surrender it, they're going to deduct the amount that you get. And I run hard, so I've got dings, dents, scratches. Shit pops up off the road all the time. <coughs> you know, so... Whatever that check is, it's 
going to be way more than 10 grand. So the money I put down on the truck at the end when it comes in will be the money that I get from my lease payout bonus. So that's what you can do. So I would definitely say anybody who's coming off lease, soon to come off lease, order a truck, and then the, the payout bonus is the money that you're gonna put down on the truck. You can put that way more down than, you can put down as much as you want. The more you put down, the less the payment's gonna be. Right? So that's what I'm planning to do. I'm planning to put down somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, 40,000. Next truck. Eight big H's out.